All right. Hello. Well, yes. Hello. Hi. Yes, I'm here. Uh, we just got raided by uh, Abby Russell. Thank you so much for the raid and welcome raiders. Hello, everyone. Uh, I was in the uh, the position of just getting ready to start things up. Uh, very excited about this raid. So we'll get we'll get into things and things. Uh, but first, hello. Uh, if you are a subscriber to the Build Bear Workshop, you can throw the Bear Cave Lego sites tier two blue emote in the chat like Lashbrook did. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, not yet anyway, you can say hi or use other people's emotes. If you feel like being a lurker, go ahead and lurk. Uh, you're just in time, folks. We're going to build a fun Lego set. We're going to hang out. It's going to be a good time. If you were unfamiliar with the Build With Bear workshop and what this entails, I will explain what this is in just one second. Let me uh, quickly just check a thing here. Okay, great. What's the Build With Bear workshop? Uh, it's my opportunity to build model kits and hang out with everybody. That's about it. I'm Pat Bear. Uh, I'm a comedy person. You may know me from PAX things or New York stuff. Uh, I'm here in South Carolina now because... Uh, Work slowed up a lot when there wasn't live theater. Uh, so I moved to South Carolina where I live uh, continuously, uh, seemingly. Uh, and I build model kits and Lego sets. And then once a week I do something that's not that. Um, but yeah, that's what, I'm, that's what I'm doing here. Uh, let's see. One quick thing. Uh, I, I did start a bit abruptly. But that's awesome because it means we, we, had, we had a bunch of uh, new folks in the chat or maybe returning. Perhaps you've been here before. Um, uh, but I am happy to see you. Um, I should just say right off the bat, some housekeeping tomorrow's stream, 9 PM Eastern. Hey, Lord Crashington, welcome 9 PM Eastern tomorrow. Uh, I will be doing uh, my gaming stream, my weekly gaming stream, and I'll be checking out garden by the sea. Uh, garden by the sea is a, uh, a game that was previously only a VR game. Uh, I came out on PSVR and, uh, meta quest. But they're doing a uh, a regular old PC and Switch uh, version. It's coming out on Thursday. And I get to look at that tomorrow. So I'm looking at the Steam version tomorrow, 9 p.m. Eastern. Please check that out. Garden of the Sea. Um, it, it seems very neat and it has been out. But technically, because again, the game has been out. This is just the PC version, the non-VR version. It's the first time I'm ever playing a game on stream before it's out for the general public so that's kind of neat i was like oh they're like yeah you can play it early because it's already out i was like yeah then i then i will i will play it early um i don't get uh, oh and then uh, important to say i received a code and permission to stream this earlier than its uh uh pc release date of thursday uh but i uh, this is not a sponsor that's not gonna be a sponsored stream uh they just provided the code and I get to choose if I'm going to stream it or not. And I am choosing to stream it. Um, but that is not a no, no sponsor, no money exchange hands, none of that. So my opinions will be my opinions, which is good because I'm I, I like to think I'm an OK actor, but I am a. I'm not great at pretending I like a thing I don't like. We'll, we'll say that, uh, especially on stream. I'm not I'm not particularly that part of the acting job. I'm not particularly great at. Uh, anyway, enough th of that yapping. Uh, let's go to the overhead camera. Here's the overhead camera. It's a bunch of Lego pieces. Pat, what, what, what's happening? Well, we're going to build an excavator. Uh, I'm glad you won't be giving someone else's opinions. Right, Lord Crashton? You know it. Oh, also, um, I should just say, because it, this is my last opportunity, last stream in order to say this, uh, September comes to an end soon. It's been September. It feels like it's been September for all of September and a little bit of August for some reason. And that's true. Uh, if you are new uh, to the channel and you want to subscribe for the first time, you get 25% off of that. Uh, if you want to gift five subs, if you want to get five subs, then bonus subs will happen. It'll be at least one. Uh, we've had uh, uh, several. I think we had like a two and then a one and a one. So that's neat. Um, so if you want to gift a sub or give five subs, it's not cumulative. You have to give five and then Twitch kicks in extra. And that's nice. Just thought I'd mention it. Um, so on a previous stream, this is the, uh, the excavator and dump truck set. We built the dump truck. The instructions for the dump truck came with the, this Lego set in this particular version for the two in one. The other thing, the, uh, excavator, you can see a photo, uh, here, um, those instructions are online, which I find annoying 
find that annoying. I don't, I don't love that. Um, so I do have the instructions. I have the PDF here on, uh, oh, Lord Crashton wants me to dance button and I will. Uh, I have that here. Uh, oh, you can see everything got real dark there. Uh, I have that on my iPad. So I will be using my iPad mini uh, uh, in order of September's end. Yes. Uh, if you are new to the channel, uh, my channel points are all silly. Uh, in this case, the big one is uh, if you use 2,500 channel points, I will play a song that does not get me in trouble. Um, uh, I will not get a takedown notice for playing it. A uh, new one every month, and then I dance to it. And dance could be in air quotes, but here's the song. Um, just about every track I play sounds like it could be underneath a montage in a YouTube video because a lot of these songs are also in YouTube's free library. Uh, but that one in particular did give end of summer vibes, which is what September's all about, baby. It's the end of the summer. Uh, uh, you know, especially the summer anime season ends in, sept in September. So, so yeah, I thought that was an appropriate song. Uh, it, it just felt like a September month song. All right. So what am I doing now, Pat? Uh, you, wh What are you doing, Pat? Well, I am noling. Uh, for those unaware uh, of that, this is a term borrowed by the uh, build community. Um, noling is actually fancier, but it is a way to display everything in front of you um, uh, so that you can find anything you need because some people, Hey Vash, welcome. Some people like to build like out of a bowl or a basket or something. They just dump all their Lego and then they hunt and peck. I'm not a hunt and pecker. That's not my thing. I should have thought about how those words sounded when I added ER to the word peck did not mean slang for penis. Um, I do not participate in hunting and pecking. We'll say that. Um, I think that's better. Uh, so what I like to do is separate by color. Um, I like to separate by color. It makes things a lot easier to find the things you're looking for because then you're like, okay, I need I need one of these blue uh, connectors here, but I need the uh, the the uh, the square and the circle one. Okay, well, I at least know that all of these blues are together and then I can narrow it down. It just does make things a lot easier uh, when you have that opportunity, when you can just look at all of the colors right there. Um, yeah, it just makes it a lot easier to find what you're looking for instead of being like, okay, uh, I have this and I need another one of those. Oh, okay, it's here, right? Yeah, instead you're just like, nope, I know exactly where the thing is that I need and I found it. Uh, makes life a lot easier. So just separating by color here. And then we're gonna spend the stream doing this, talking about things. In the second hour, we'll talk about an anime from the uh, now just about over summer season that I missed out on uh, that was recommended, uh, highly recommended that I should check out. This was a series that I missed that people were like, oh, you should watch that. And I watched the first two episodes and I planned on watching the first three episodes, which should give you an indication of how I felt about particular series and which we'll talk about in the second hour. And then also in the second hour, I'll talk about an anime, or sorry, a manga that I have been reading. Uh, a manga that is, uh, it's not an isekai. I'll say that. Is it a story about a character getting banished uh, uh, from, from something? Yes. Well, it's not an isekai. But it is a subgenre I read a lot of. That is not the isekai subgenre. Different world. I don't say that enough for people's liking. So I will try to say that more. Um, isekai means different world. It is a subgenre of anime about people or persons who start in a world that is like ours, generally, but not exclusively, and end up in a world that is different. But really, it just means a character that goes to a different world. Alice in Wonderland is an isekai. If you're saying I've never watched, I've never watched or read or done anything with Isekai. Well, Alice in Wonderland is an Isekai. Uh, Wizard of Oz is an Isekai. Uh, you know the the traditional uh, Isekai uh, are 
not exclusively, but often in uh, Japanese storytelling. Of course, they, they exist there, but were influenced very much. The original like manga and light novel isekai were influenced by Alice in Wonderland and uh, Wizard of Oz and that kind of writing. Uh, so that's why the first isekai that became popular were female led. And then there were male led stories, certainly, and they became incredibly popular to do it with uh, one of the grandfathers of the isekai genre in light novel form, um, uh, uh, Jobless Reincarnation, which has an anime adaptation, and I cannot recommend it because it, I do not think it's good, but it is like important to at least know that, okay, that was such a big hit and there were so many copycats that that's why the genre is in many ways the way that it is and also did improve because people were like, actually, I am going to skip the part where he, where this character is a baby. Now, not every isekai does that, but a lot of isekai skip the part where they're reborn and they skip ahead into them being like a young adult because they're like, eh, I don't need to do that part. Um, they've learned over the years. Uh, and then, of course, the the show that is not an isekai, but popularized modern isekai tropes is Sword Art Online. Because that's not an isekai. It's a death game anime or death game story. It's not an isekai because virtual, virtual world is not. Except towards the end where it kind of does become an isekai because he goes deeper into worlds and... Uh, it gets complicated in a way that I could maybe see it being an isekai. But dude, generally, that's not an isekai. But the tropes of that show became very popular among people writing isekai. So it like eh, it's got it's got some lineage because Sword Art Online is people who are playing a virtual reality game uh, and then stuck in that game. Whereas Overlord is about a person that had been playing a virtual reality game and suddenly they are in the game and the game is real and it is a real world similar to the game they play. Uh, so same same thing for how not to summon a demon lord and demon lord retry and uh, God, what else? What else is that? That is very popular. Uh, Skeleton in another world. Skeleton Knight in another world. Pa pa apologies. Uh, that's a... Very popular. Oh, uh, Kuma 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 Bear is, is one of them. How can I forget Kuma 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 Bear? Silly me. But that is the, I played a video game and now the video game is real and I live in that world. As opposed to Log Horizon or Dot Hack or Sword Art Online where they are trapped in that world. And it is not real. They know it's a video game still. There are more examples that I don't remember off the top of my head. Anyway, I'm not going to talk about an isekai. Actually, yeah, neither the anime or manga I'll talk in the second hour is an isekai. Um, I do want to start things off with saying tomorrow's stream, Garden by the Sea, should be very fun. I am excited to check that game out. Um, there is a chance that that stream will feel a little weird. Uh, because tomorrow afternoon, I am getting uh, the COVID booster and my flu shot. I did not want to get them at the same time, but I am getting them at the same time. And that could be bad for me. That could, I could have a bad reaction. Um, the second shot of when I got COVID, or no, I didn't get COVID, when I got the f COVID uh, shot the second time, uh, meaning like the second half. Um, that was the only time I have been negatively affected by, uh, uh, any of the shots or boosters. Um, so I don't think I will be feel bad, but I might, um, I'll, I'll know, you know, probably, and I'll probably say something before the stream starts. Uh, I don't think I would cancel the stream, uh, because generally, I've only canceled the stream because um, the I was dropping so many frames that it got really frustrated. That's generally the only time. 
Oh, and that one time that I uh, I streamed, and just nobody came. Uh, that's only happened, I think, once. Uh, but that was a. Uh, turns out that people were busy. The people were either watching the game awards or doing other things on Thursday. But it was a uh, that was a yeah that was a bad time. Uh, that last game awards. So yeah, this year's game awards. I don't think I'm going to co-stream it. I think I might just take the night off. Not that I will watch the game awards, but that I will not stream that night. Because yeah, it just didn't didn't work out. It happens. Um. So yeah, getting getting the shots tomorrow. I uh, want to do this do those separately, but it works out that we're going to do it. Paying out of pocket, which is incredibly frustrating. Um. The last time I got a booster, it was the end of the bridge program that that uh, I think it was called bridge. There was a program where um, uh, it, things were being picked up um, by the CDC and a federal program. I do not have. Uh, unfortunately, that has not continued. And uh, since I do not have insurance, I am paying out of pocket. Uh, and it's a lot, probably probably a lot of money um so oh yeah i'm using my ipad here uh which is so far fine uh we have nulled all the pieces so now we're in the building process as you can see we were working on the excavator you can see above me um let's see uh stuff that we can talk about tonight uh what do we want to talk about here um We'll do a, a quick little update here. Just a quick update on a story that we have uh, chatted about previously because uh, I thought it would be good to uh, to update people on this. Uh, if you if you missed the story, uh, Annapurna Interactive in name exists right now. Uh, Annapurna Films, or Annapurna, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Annapurna Interactive and Annapurna Pictures are all under the same umbrella. They're all own, owned um, uh, by Megan Ellison, who is the founder. Uh, she's, I'm sorry, she's the co-founder of it. Um, and this September, we found out that... Uh, let's see, uh, three across, okay. Everyone who was working there uh, in the interactive portion, not the film and TV, but in the interactive portion, every employee... Uh, bounced out. Everybody left. Um, and that felt, seemed wild at the time. That, um, and then a lot of stuff came out. We found out a lot of things about what was happening there, um, which we will we'll kind of, uh, ooh, this is the wrong piece. I pulled the wrong thing out of here immediately, but luckily noticed it and would have been able to fix it uh, otherwise as well. Um, so, uh oh sorry lord crash says the new Cross game features the rising of the shield here anime for its theme weird sure yeah that that you know what that's a thing that can exist sure i'm not gonna i'm not gonna poo poo that that's fine um rising the shield hero and isekai that's also a kicked also part of the kicked subgenre um so anyway, uh, we knew a bunch of stuff uh, from reports. Bloomberg did a lot of reporting on this. Uh, uh, GameDeveloper.com has a summary of some of these things. We knew about this. We knew that um, Megan Ellison uh, uh, basically took a backseat from running her, her own company and put uh, Nathan Gary. Hey, welcome Raiders. Uh, welcome, uh, artistic biologist. We got our second raid of the stream. Very kind of you. Welcome, welcome. Happy to have you here. Uh, hello, hello. We are talking about some new uh, information that came out. Oh, thank you for the follow. Appreciate that. Uh, we're talking about some new information that came out uh, uh, after the uh, basically everyone at um, Annapurna Interactive had quit uh, their jobs all at the same time. Uh, there has been some new information, but basically to, to catch you up all, all up on the speed, what had happened was um, it, back in 2019, Nathan Gary became the acting head of both branches of, uh, of the interactive and also of the uh, pictures. 
So he was running both sides of it. That was not something that he necessarily wanted. And there was a lot of friction there because he was focused on the interactive, which was apparently keeping the film and television department afloat. This is, again, these are reports, a lot of this stuff. Uh, a lot of the things I'm going to be talking about here have been contradicted by the spokesperson for Annapurna Interactive and Pictures, who has a very different opinion on all of these things. Um, Gary Sanchez, or sorry, Gary, it's... Gary Sanchez Productions is is uh, Will Ferrell's and Adam McKay's production company. So, sorry. But every time I see Nathan Gary and Hector Sanchez, I combine the two in my head to be Gary Sanchez. So, my apologies. I may do that again. But anyway... Um, Hector uh, Sanchez was part of it. Uh, he had left uh, in 2019 to go to Epic, and he was doing stuff at Epic, and they did some other uh, minor things. And then it was suddenly announced that, one, Megan Ellison was returning to kind of run her company after basically not doing that uh, for a while, for quite a long time, and that Gary had a job there. Gary had a job. Gary was back. He was going to be working on some stuff. And then also, at some point, another high-ranking person from Interactive had been laid off. Um, seemingly out of nowhere. This is one of one of Nathan Gary's people. Um, so then, Nathan Gary either quit or was also uh, fired. But then that went away. And suddenly... Nathan was back, the other employee was back, and everything was quote-unquote fine. Uh, and everything was looking like it would be okay, I guess, uh, seemingly. And then it, it appeared that uh, all of Interactive was trying to dissolve from Annapurna, uh, the other side of it. They were trying to go independent there would be a group thing basically it would be like they would have the freedom to do what they wanted to do and the projects they wanted to do and then in exchange for that annapurna would just get a lot of fucking money from them which makes some sense um last games they managed to put out was lorelei and laser here's the thing they put out a lot of games uh annapurna interactive has still has games on the books they had games come out this year uh, they're still doing stuff. Uh, so basically, um, they tried to separate. It looked like that was a thing that was going to happen. Then communication ended, uh, and it just didn't happen at all. It looks like, oh no, we're not getting this. This isn't going to happen. Basically, this is not going to work out. Uh, and because that isn't going to happen there, Everybody walks. Everybody leaves. Everybody left, except for Hector Sanchez. Hector Sanchez, for a little while there, was the only employee of uh, Annapurna Interactive. And then they, apparently there was another person that got hired that was supposedly hired for pictures, but actually was hired for that. It's a whole thing. Now, some other information has come to light, um, which this right this looks like okay which is uh, reported by bloomberg and has not been substantiated by other sources i am not putting any claims on bloomberg being inaccurate about this i am just saying um so allegedly um uh back in 2019 uh hector sanchez made some unwanted advances on two female employees of the company. And they were clearly not happy about that. And then in light of this, Nathan Gary made it so that the plan where, Hen uh, where Henry Sanchez was going to be in charge of uh, the internship program, that was like, Gary was like, no, that's not going to happen. And shortly after that, let's see, one, two, three, four. Shortly after that, uh, he left and he went to Epic. 
spokesman for um spokesman for uh, uh annapurna interactive and annapurna pictures basically said no -uh, that's not true what is true is that for the, their their opinion nathan gary was always um uh worried about hector sanchez stealing his job or something because he had a close relationship, close friendship with, um, uh, with the owner of the company. So that is a, that is some new information. Um, yes, apparently, according to them, Gary felt threatened. Uh, that is some new information that we have here. Um, uh, okay. And is there any new information? that so i would say if you are somebody that has accusations made about them and leaves and then oh oh yes all right we we are having an ad break starting fairly soon my apologies uh for folks um uh but there is going to be an ad break i might be able to delay it uh, I did not take an ad break before the stream started because we got raided right at the beginning. So my apologies for folks, uh, but it looks like we will have, uh, oh, an ad break, uh, ad break is now done. Okay. So yeah, I didn't see the notification saying an ad break was coming. My apologies. I didn't run an ad break before the stream started. Um, so it looks like it's just going to run or maybe an ad break didn't happen and Seribot is being silly. I don't know. But yeah, I didn't run, uh, usually right at the start of the stream, I run ads uh, because people haven't come in. But because we, a raid happens, I want to just get things going. Uh, but anyway, so um, I would say that if you basically made a guy go away from a company and then a couple of years later, he came back when the boss who had been an absentee boss is suddenly there. You might think, okay, we got to fucking finish this ad. No, it definitely ran an ad. Well, thank you, Lashbrook. Uh, yeah, I don't know if, I don't see the ads. I don't know if you, you probably know this because you are around, but there's always somebody that doesn't know this because I remember being in a stream where somebody was sure that the streamer, they were like, why are you showing these ads? And the streamer was like, I don't know what ads you saw. And they're like, "You, yes, you do. You get them. And it was like, no. No, uh, I am considered a t tier three subscriber to my own stream. Um, back when they used to give you the printout of who your subscribers are, uh, I would be listed as a tier three. So, uh, and I have to be a tier three because I have to be able to use the tier three emote, which doesn't exist. But if it did exist, I need to be able to use it. So I'm considered a tier three subscriber to my own channel, which is fun. Because, I don't know, I find that fun. Um, all right, so this is going to go on here. Working on our excavator. This moves and this moves. So far, we got we got this moving and that moving. Okay, and then this needs one of these here. Um, anyway, uh... There's some been so that is the basically the the uh, the update is basically, hey, there's some accusations made about Gary San or Henry Sanchez again. I fucked it up, Henry Sanchez. Uh, I knew I would do that again. Uh, I would say Gary Sanchez um, instead of Nathan Gary and Hector Sanchez. So yeah, who knows? Uh, supposedly, uh, the team is looking at options about getting funding from someone uh starting you know looking for vc capital or everyone just going on their own but at the very least it seems like people were not going to hang around to see what like the new um uh interactive was going to be and i don't blame them it's wild you don't generally see a walkout like that but um but yeah they clearly said you know seemed to agree that it was not going to, whatever new thing was going to come was not going to work out. Uh, it's fun to have full access to all the emotes I've made in other people's channels and someone who's technically subscribed to herself. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, that is cool. Yes, because you're subscribed to yourself, you can use all your emotes. Yes, I can use all my emotes in other people's channels as well, um, which is a fun bit of business. Um, let's see, we need the seven. This is the five. This is the seven. Uh, I do appreciate this. Oh, I'll, I'll put this here so you can see. Um, it'll get a little dark, but you can still probably see that. Uh, it does. The number seven is there because there are seven holes in this piece here. So it is saying, hey, there you go. Three, six, seven. That is very helpful. And then this is going to go in the dead center. And then that is going to go here to there. And then this piece I go into. The no. OK, so this doesn't go into anything yet. This nubbin, but this nubbin and this nubbin go together. I think I did this right. We'll find out later. This seems to be accurate. Yeah, so far this is looking right. But again, I don't, I can't say for sure that I'm, I'm nailing it. But well, actually, no, look at it. This might not be right. I th think this is correct. Oh, maybe this piece is off. Where does this go? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, and then one. This, this might be wrong. I'm gonna, I'm gonna scroll back here. One, two, and then that one. No, okay, that is right. Okay. According to the other step, this is correct. All right. This seems to be right. We'll, f you know what? It's Lego. We mess up, we fix it. We're good. Everything will be okay. Um, we'll make it happen. Uh, so we need one of these. We need. Uh, mm -hmm. Still got to hunt and peck a little bit. We need one of these. No, not this piece. Need the this piece here we go uh and then we need a black i would have trouble i don't know how to describe these things um they're the like the lego blind runs or or keep legoing and nobody explodes uh it's lego technic seems to be right is a common thought aristaman i did notice that in the previous thing where i was like i think i'm doing this correctly and then i'll go oh no i didn't do this right okay um but yeah Seems to be a little bit of, uh, I think I'm doing it. We'll, we'll find out later. Um, oh yeah. What else? What was I saying there? Oh, um, yeah. The, like the people that do I'm building, I don't have the instructions. Someone else has the instructions and they have to describe like what to do next. Like regular Lego, like, Oh, grab the one by four, grab the, grab the one by the orange one by three. Be like, okay, it's one of these. Great, I got it. This would be like, grab the the three thing where two out of the three is a like cross shape and then the other one is the like spring connect. No, it's not spring, but I don't know. Like, I don't know how I would describe that. Grab the gear like thing. You know, like, I don't know. I don't know the nomenclature for this. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, all right. So this goes here. And again, I think this is right. Oh, I've got. Grab the zigzag. Grab the light gray zigzag. Like, that's what I would call this. I would call this a zigzag. And I bet somebody would look at that and go, what the fuck? fuck do you mean zigzag pat i don't know now honestly what i would do what i would really do is because i wouldn't know what kit we were doing right of course wouldn't know what kit we were doing but i would meet with the person that i would be doing this with right and i would be like let's come up with some names for things which is a cheat again again i wouldn't know what the instruction booklet was but I would 
It's called the Z. Yeah. If I'm lucky, I'm looking for multiple of the same piece and I can hold one of them up. Yes. But yeah. Um, I love, uh, you know, but yes, I, I would, I have just declared that I would uh, finesse it. Not cheating, but I would talk to the person I was doing this with ahead of time. Okay. Uh, all right. We do have to talk about this. Um, this is a quick one here. Uh, Valve is updating its stream, uh, uh, its Steam subscriber agreement. Uh, it is updating the update. You may, you may have heard that there was uh, an upcoming uh, update to, or uh, that was happening uh, with the subscriber agreement. Uh, there's going to be a new version of it in November, and the new version of it takes out some of the old, uh, the the last version, uh, some of the shit that people were like, "Hey, no, fuck off." Valve, stop trying, stop like many companies trying to force arbitration on people for conflict resolution. You can't do that. Uh, but basically there was an update um, uh, and the new version is, uh, the new new version is removing the old new versions, uh, which had a requirement for disputes. Uh, uh, They had a, um, uh, basically, uh, they had a problem that required disputes to go through individual arbitration. Now, arbitration is basically just saying like, hey, a guy is going to decide this. And in the United States of America, the guy that decides this is someone generally paid by the company that is pushing for the arbitration company or person pushing for the arbitration. So generally it's just like, Hey, we paid this person to come in and hear our case, uh, and not go to civil trial or regular trial, or for you to say, we're doing a class action lawsuit. You can't do that. Cause you said that you, you, by, by being a steam customer, you say that you will go through arbitration. Um, and generally in arbitration, the people with the most money win. Hooray. So that is, uh, now that is not going for it. Um, and it'll be default by November 1st, although some people are already seeing that. Uh, an event dispute relating to, basically, yeah. Um, so this affected, you may not even seen any of this if you live outside of the United States. Um, uh, because in the UK, Europe, New Zealand, Australia, a bunch of regions, there are already exemptions from arbitration. And this was uh, something I didn't know. Not all of Canada, just Quebec. Just a province that says, actually, no, you don't get to do this. But not the whole of not the whole of Canada, just Quebec. Uh, last week, I didn't see their reasons. Um, uh, but basically, they're just like, OK, let's see. Um, changes, newest update to platform. Summer made a sweeping front and back end updates. One of the most significant changes in July was the social media linking. Yeah, OK. So basically, they're pulling back on the thing that people were fucking furious about, which is good uh, because forced arbitration is um, shit. It's just shit. So that's good. That's a good update. Um, okay, we got to do this other thing here. Let's kind of talk about um, Epic. Let's talk a bit about Epic and what Epic's doing, which is um, suing Samsung and Google. That's right. They're suing Samsung and Google. They're suing Google again, but mostly suing them because of them allowing Samsung to uh, allegedly block third-party app distribution. Now, um, 
this is this is unprecedented for uh for this for one of these streams okay so oh we turn this oh upside down the fuck and then this gets connected to i guess the first piece here yeah okay yes i think i just connected this correctly and then we'll get another thing here uh i did some research because i was like is i don't want to take epic at face value here because they're epic uh, is what they're saying true? And before we get, we'll get into all, all of the, we'll get into a little bit of nitty gritty. Um, the answer is kind of. So just keep that in mind. What I'm about to talk about here from Epic's perspective, because they're the only people quoted in this game developer story, um, is kind of accurate. Uh, all right. And then this goes to that. But then what is this connect okay it goes to that this piece isn't actually connected to anything yet this part here yeah okay um so epic is saying that samsung is blocking third party apps uh uh and they're making it used to be something that was opt in uh now they're making it something you have to opt out of and it's on by default and they're making it so that uh, competitors like them, it would be harder for them to load their store and they're doing this maliciously and it's a whole conspiracy, yada, yada, yada. It's a whole fucking thing. Um, it's anti, anti competitive. Uh, Epic states the auto blocker was introduced as an opt in feature that prevents users from installing software outside Google Play Store. It claims auto blocker has since been turned on into a default setting that can only be circumvented by following an exceptionally onerous 21 step process. That's something I wanted to clear. I wanted to make very clear that they claim uh, this is again, this is uh, a claim that this process to, to make this thing go to make the go away so you can easily load third party is a 21 step process um and and they do have evidence from their last fight with google about samsung yada 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 so what is this what is um auto blocker uh auto blocker keeps uh, uh basically it just says that you can uh block apps from unauthorized sources block app commands block commands by usb ca uh, cables uh block malware images and messaging apps block software updates by usb cable it basically is a preventative thing because the google store can be kind of a wild west and they're like we got thoughts on that. Uh, okay, so then turn this around. And this is going to go into this. Okay. Um, so, when I said that what, what was being alleged is sort of true, what do I mean that? Well, originally... Um, the default setting for auto blocker, it was set to off and you had to opt in. In a recent update, that has changed. So they were accurate. In a recent update, uh, for devices updating to that, if you get a brand new phone, a phone with factory settings, a brand new phone on the brand new version of um, One UI 6.11, if you get a brand new phone uh, for Samsung, it will be, it will, auto blocker will be turned on. If you update your phone to the new software, it will go by whatever you used previously. So new phones, brand new phones or phones reset to factory will have that auto blocker turned on. Old phones, so AKA most phones, will not have that turned on unless you already turned it on yourself. So some are opt-in, but, uh, but, but you know, a very small amount are opt-out. The other thing is, it is not hard. Oh, hi, Vicky. You went to the store. Nice. Um, 
uh, it is not hard to turn that off. You go to settings. I think it's like three buttons and you can turn it off. It is not 21 steps. That would be wild if it was 21 steps. It's just like settings, data, privacy, auto blocker. It's like four steps at best. Uh, it is not difficult at all to turn that off if you want to turn it off. Um, and honestly, it seems like if my mom was like, I'm ditching my iPhone and I want to get an Android phone uh, and I'm buying it from Samsung. If my mom said that to me, I would go and make sure that that was turned off because I don't want her to open malware on her, you know, and I don't want her to, I don't want my mom side loading on a, uh, on an Android. You know what I mean? I would honestly probably have the auto blocker off and only turn it on when I really wanted to, uh, uh, sorry. I just want to click one thing here. Oh, Hey, somebody gifted me a sub to Mary Kish. Oh, Twitch did. So somebody gifted some subs and I benefited from the gifted subs. That's really nice. Uh, that's lovely. We're probably going to raid Mary Kish tonight because we usually do, unless she isn't streaming, in which case we won't. But if she is streaming, then we will. Uh, all right. So this is going to go like this. So anyway, long story short, Epic's at it again. They're doing their thing. They are... Uh, getting in a lawsuit and they are, uh, she's streaming grapple dogs. Hell yeah. Thank you, Lord Crashin, for letting me know. So do I think that auto blocker is anti-competitive? Mm, there is an argument to be made that by having new phones with that fact, or factory reset phones, having it set to on and, and making it opt out is going to decrease the opportunity people have to sideload apps, including the Epic Store. I guess there could be made an argument, an argument could be made for that. But is this a malicious intent to do this? Like, did they make this for to like fuck around with epic i personally do not believe so perhaps i'm out of line but i it does not feel to me like that is the case uh again i don't know maybe it is maybe i'm uh being too trusting uh about that but i gotta feel like samsung isn't thinking about epic they're not thinking about like they're just not thinking about Fortnite. You know what I mean? Yeah, they'd like that Fortnite money, but not enough to worry about it. Um, so yeah, we'll see where this uh, lawsuit goes. At the end of the day, if it if it ends up being good for consumers, hell yeah. But generally, these don't end up good for consumers. So, eh. Um, Um, and then one last little news thing, um, team Asobi is out there chatting about, um, uh, final fantasy seven, uh, erasure because people have raised issue about why there is not a cloud bot because there are a lot of interesting, um, things within the game. There are a lot of references to a lot of PlayStation history, of course, PlayStation is not, uh, PlayStation and Final Fantasy are often like synonymous. Uh, certainly it comes out, you know, PlayStation, they come out on multiple platforms, but feels like their home is there and there are, there have been PlayStation exclusives for Final Fantasy, including uh, Final Fantasy 7 and with there being the, you know, like at some time. Um, and also people were like, well, the PS5 is like, Astro Astro's Playroom had a Final Fantasy VII reference. So why isn't it there? Uh, so Nicholas uh, Duche of Team Asobi, uh, who is the director of Astrobot, 
um, was asked about uh, how the game's uh, 300 plus um, bots were uh, created. Um, I was thinking, well, maybe half of the ones we're wishing for will make it. Uh, in the end, in fact, almost 100% are in because these partners just raised their hand and said, absolutely. On the subject of the missing bots from Final Fantasy, Kingdom Hearts, and Nier, Duchette was diplomatic when he said they didn't end up in the game. It's difficult to comment on that. We really respect the choice of each publisher. Other missing bots like Twisted Metal's Psychopath Clown Sweet Tooth was, uh, was at their discretion. They advised us, they'd enforce us, and we agreed that it was better to leave this character out. Um... Because if you're playing with your kids, you don't want to have to explain what that character does. So it sounds like, and again, very diplomatic way that it was described. It sounds like Square Enix was like, no. That's what it sounds like. Who knows? But that's what it sounds like. Um, that a few things they were looking for, they just did not get. And that was one of them. Um and that in some instances, they were like, I really do love that, that they were like, oh, we should get we should get the clown in there. We should get the murder clown in there. And we were like, do you actually want that? And they were like, yeah, I guess you're right. Um, there is a free expansion uh, coming out, which will. So it will have Helldivers and Stellar Blade in there. So that's a little bit of like a. Well, if if you're sure, you you sure you want to okay. However, you want to do it. Um, but yeah, it it seems like this. It's not much of a story here, but it, it did feel like it did feel like something I wanted to comment on. Uh, that they asked some people, and it sounds like Square Enix said no. Uh, there's also the, the challenging levels there. Yeah. Um, and then there's rumors that they are after that they are having part of their team work on the expansion, uh, while the rest of the squad is gearing up for, uh, a sequel. That is, that is rumor. The rumor mill is that's the next game. The team is so we work is working on is the sequel to Astrobot, uh, which would make some fucking, a lot of fucking sense. I would say, I would say would make a lot of sense. Uh, if you wanted to buy the Death Stranding 2 uh, jacket um, from Acronym, uh, it sold out really fast. The cool orange jackets that apparently ran for $1,700 um uh, apparently, yes. Uh, and then <laughs> Kojima's like, oh, we, we did this partnership on the beach collab jacket um, on sale now. We do not plan to sell this item on the global Kojima production store, but apparently sold out real fast um, on Sunday. Uh, the article in Taku is like, you didn't buy this because they sold out really quickly and because... You probably aren't. I have seventeen thousand or seventeen hundred dollars to buy on a jacket, money. Uh, apparently, this thing has a uh, removable hoodie and a strap that turns the jacket into a bag, which is cool. Ah. Uh, I mean, it does look kind of neat. But yeah, it sold out real quick. They do look... that. that look, I'll say this. It looks like a pretty fucking cool jacket. Uh, then one last thing. Uh, because when I stream tomorrow, it'll already have happened here. So we'll say, uh, let's pour one out. Uh, raise our glasses here and say goodbye to co-host the 
a social media platform uh, ran by good intentions, cool vibes, uh, a no interest loan from an anonymous source, uh, and some money coming in from, from some things, uh, various means but was just a few people trying to make a cool social media platform that felt like the early days of Tumblr. Uh, as of tomorrow, co-host is October 1st uh, in the United States. Uh, co-host will be read only all co-host plus subscriptions because there was a paid tier uh, thing. Uh, those will all be refunded uh, or canceled, I should say. Nick. Nick, this is just subscribing with Prime for eight months saying excavators. Hell yeah. Thank you so much, Nick. Let's throw the Bear Cave Lego site to you Bloom on the chat. Thank Nick very much for using your Prime gaming token. Appreciate you very much, Nick. Thank you very much for that. Uh, uh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Put some votes in the chat. Uh, yeah, we're working on an excavator. It's pretty cool. Um, yeah, so tomorrow... Um, Account deletions will re remain available. If you just want to delete your account, you can do that. Um, but it'll go read only and will still exist, but you will not be able to edit anything or uh, or do anything but delete. You won't be able to add anything or like things or uh, chost or rechost. Um, starting uh, on October 1st, data exports will happen for all users. They think it's going to take a while. Um, and once your export's ready, you're going to get an email to download it. And then data export downloads will remain available until the server is shut down on December 31st. They think they have enough money to keep it, uh, keep, keep this portion alive. So, but I would say that if you do have a co-host account and you do want to download stuff, uh, that you should, uh, okay. It didn't include that step there. What the fuck? Um, they skipped a step here. I know that this piece has to go in here, but they don't show me doing it. They just show that in there, and that's weird. Um, but yeah, if you uh, get that link, if you have an account on, on Co-host, you get that link to download, and you do want to download uh, your data, uh, I would say do that sooner rather than later, uh, simply because who knows how long they're actually going to have the servers up for. Okay, I'm gonna be honest. I don't know where this go, where, where this is supposed to fit into. Um, this looks like this. Yeah, these go in. Okay, the, oh, oh, okay. I did this in the wrong spot. That might be right. So I'm gonna use my uh, brick separator and I'm gonna push that in there to pop that out because I did do a step wrong. I did do the wrong thing in here. Okay, so now that I did that, maybe I can put this where it needs to be, which is here. Now will that slide in? Now what is this supposed to slide into? No. Hmm. Okay. That goes like that. I'm doing these steps correctly. That goes into there. That goes on top of there. That goes on there. And then this just fits in here. Question mark. Oh. What? Oh, it goes here. Okay, that's how it works. Again, I I, I fully admit, I might be bad at, at, at doing Lego Technic. This is my first time doing Lego Technic on stream. Well, it was, it was the first time was doing the um, uh, dump truck. But yeah, I might just be not great at this. Or Lego Technic's instructions could be a little bad. It's possible. It's possible. Um, yeah, so pour one out for uh, that. Oh, and then December 31st, completely, totally online. All data will be deleted. So, yeah, and then J January 1st, 2025, 
cohost.org will, re- will redirect to the Wayback Machine to prevent link rot, is what they say. Uh, and they will be paying out of pocket. Um, but they said that it's not that expensive. But the idea is they don't want some, they don't want cohost.org to just be bought up by somebody else. Uh, I end up using both paper and iPad instructions. Yeah, so this second, uh, I said I mentioned this beginning of the stream. Uh, for those that, that weren't here for that, I'll just I'll just say it again. Um this uh the excavator here that we are we're currently working with, um, did not have paper instructions. Uh, the paper instructions were for the dump truck, and this is website only. Uh, so I am just using a PDF on my iPad, uh, which is less than ideal. Uh, I would generally prefer to just use um, the uh, the paper instructions, but whatever. Again, that that's not available for this. Uh, so no, I'm, I'm not using the Lego app. I went in a, a web browser to the instruction page and opened the PDF on my iPad and I'm just using that. Um, I could have downloaded the app, but I just felt like this is easier because I don't, it was one of those things where I'm like, ah, I bet the app works on this iPad. This iPad is old. I bet it still work. It would work on it, but I'm just going to go and do that. Uh, ask me how I knew you got an ad earlier, says Lashbrook, who subscribed at Prime. 82 months, that's so many months. Thank you very much, Lashbrook. Let's show the Bear Cave Lego sites here to Bloom out in the chat and thank Lashbrook for their continued support. That makes sense, Lashbrook, that you saw an ad uh, because you, uh, yeah, you, for a little while there, were not a subscriber. For a brief moment. They got you. Um, all right, let's put this step in. Whoop. And Imjohn says, same thing happened to me, subscribing with Prime for 34 months. Let's throw the Bear Cave Lego site, Tier 2 Blue Mode in the chat, and thank Imjohn for their continued support. Yeah, just that that's the way the cookie crumbles, where you were not a subscriber during the stream, uh, briefly. All right, so I'm going to add this piece in here, and then this slides in this way, like this. Ooh, it's the back. And then we'll figure out what to do with that on step 34, which we'll get to in a bit. Um, Now is the part of the stream where I am gonna talk to you, the viewer, about ways that you can support what I do here. Everything I'm about to talk to you about is optional. You under no requirement to do any of the things. I'm not making any demands. I'm not begging you to do any of this stuff. I've just merely given you the option that if you wanted to support me financially, Here's various ways you can do it. Uh, if you are currently a subscriber of the Build Wear Bear Workshop, you can throw the Bear Cave Lego site tier two blue emote in chat and let the people know that subscribing here on Twitch is uh, the best way to support what I do here. A reminder that it's currently September. And so if you want to subscribe today for your first time, you will save money by subscribing right now, which would be great. Um, and uh, if you gift five subs, that's another way to support me in the channel. Give five subs to the community. There will be bonus gift subs uh, on top of uh, uh, your already uh, subs. And reminder, if it's me or anybody else, don't use the Twitch app because they used to eat the cost and now they don't. John just gifted some subs uh, to uh, uh, Daily Bean and Slusu Shepherd and uh, and Vicky Omora and Jatsu and Rejizzle. And then Twitch jumped in a bonus by giving a subscription to Rain. So thank you very much. Appreciate you very much for that. We got a hype train going, which is fun. Um, uh, figured out which size piece was hard, was hard without the paper instructions. Yes, yes. When they say that this is like uh, this piece here and they're like, it's a nine or a seven. And you're like, oh, you could just put it on the paper and judge it. Can't really do that on the... Uh, print out. You're right. That does make it more difficult. Um, but yes, uh, thank you very much for everybody that just gifted some subs. I uh, really appreciate it. Uh, uh, so thank you very much, John, for doing that uh, with the bonus sub, which is really kind and really cool of everybody. Appreciate you all very much for that. Uh, you also, as used by John and also Lashbrook very recently on this stream, you could, if you wanted to, if you wanted to, 
you can use your Prime Gaming token. If you have Amazon Prime linked with your Twitch, you get that token. You can use that token for anybody. If you want to use it for me, that would be great. I use my token for Loading Ready Run, the fine folks at Loading Ready Run. Um, uh, yeah, I do that. Because uh, why not? Because uh, I like what they do. And I watch a bunch of their streams. I lurk. I lurk a lot. Um, Beach did his anime roundup last night and I missed it. Uh, totally missed it. I was doing other stuff, but I didn't know he was doing it. So now I got to watch that archive because I want to know. I I just need to know. Did Beach watch one of the anime where... Did he watch the anime where the love triangle with the twins and the guy? Or did he watch the anime with the girl that is his stepsister? And maybe they have a crush on one another. I need to know if Beach watched either of those. And I will find out. I didn't watch either of those. But I need to know if Brendan Beach Derry watched those. Um, I'll find out later. Anyway. That's a tangent. Uh, thank you everybody that subscribed. Thank you for the gifted subs and all of that. Uh, there are other ways to support what I do here and I will do my best to quickly get through all of this. Uh, there might be an ad break while I do this. I will not, uh, delay the ad break. We'll just get right into it. Um, Patreon. I got a Patreon. There is a $1, $3, $5, and $10 tier. There are different rewards for different tiers. Consider joining me on Patreon, uh, tomorrow, uh, which is the first of the month. Uh, I will send out a message to all my patrons with my schedule and my patrons get to see that schedule of streaming before other people do. So take a look at that if you'd like. Um, uh, you know, maybe it's worth a dollar to you to get that information uh, early. Um, but otherwise, you know, feel free to jump in there. Um, let's see. Uh, YouTube.com slash Pat Bear is my YouTube channel. Over on YouTube, you can subscribe for free, of course. Please do for all the videos that I make and put out there because uh, you'll be helping the channel and more on that in a moment. Uh, and then, of course, if you want to become a member and spend money for just $2 a month, you get to see my Wednesday videos on Tuesday. So tomorrow, you will see a video that otherwise you'd have to wait another day for of my ongoing series called Kuma Bear. More on that later. Um... Let's see. Uh, those are monthly ways to support me. If you wanted to just tonight, right now, support me financially as a one-time like gift, you could uh, uh, send me something to my Ko-Fi or my PayPal. Uh, everything I make through direct donations through YouTube, which includes AdSense, so watching my videos helps me out, uh, through Patreon and through Twitch, all goes into a fund. And out of that fund, I buy model kits to build. I got a backlog kits. I got something in the mail today that I'm saving. It's in my backlog, but I'm not going to use it until uh, uh, Halloween. I bought a kit that is perfect for a Halloween build uh, that actually might take two streams. So we'll build it on Halloween and then maybe the next stream after that. Um, uh, what was I saying? There? Oh, now this kit, this excavator, this was purchased off my Amazon wish list by Aristofan. So thank you to Aristofan, aka James, for picking that up. Uh, I have an Amazon wish list. I am putting the link here in chat. If you would like to buy something, uh, you'll get a dedicated YouTube video uh, from my channel about the thing that you bought. And also, it'll jump the queue like this did. I got a backlog of stuff. My $10 patrons voted on what I was doing next. And then this kit came in the mail. And I was like, sorry, we'll do that after. Uh, so I have Lego sets. I got model kits. I have inexpensive kits, very expensive kits, kits that are on sale all the time, kits with free shipping, kits that don't have any free shipping, and that's uh, not included in that. All kinds of different things. Take a look at the wish list. See if there's something there you'd like to see me build. And you don't have to, but if you wanted to, you could. Um, but yeah, I got a bunch of different things here, a variety of costs. See if there's something there you'd like to see me put together. Um uh okay great got the hype train ended level two that's nice um okay uh my alternative to amazon is throne because some people don't want to use amazon so i have a throne wish list feel free to take a look at that and then the most convoluted way to support me financially which people have done i only bring it up because people have done it you go to usagundamstore.com you buy a gift card there they send you an email with that gift card code then you take that good gift card code and you go ahead and you send me a whisper here on Twitch or a DM on Twitter or a uh, chat, a private chat on 
Blue Sky or a private mention on Mastodon with that gift card code. And I will use that gift card code to buy something for USA Gundam Store. It's convoluted. And I appreciate everyone that has done it. Um, if you go to my Discord, you want to join my Discord? That's a way to support me for free. If you want to do that, you're more than welcome to hang out in the Discord. We would love to have you over there on the old Discord. A um, couple video links for you to check out. Today, I posted the latest episode of Pat Bear's Anime Club, my ongoing video series uh, about anime topics that I want to discuss. This was my summer wrap-up and fall preview. The fall season has begun. Uh, I have not, uh, tonight, I, have, I will not be talking about the new shows. I will, on Thursday, be wrapping up the very tail end of the summer season. Uh, I recorded this last Tuesday on stream. It's a over two hours of me talking about the anime that was and the anime that is to come. Uh, the season hasn't really kicked off super much, super hard, but there are a few things that I, uh, you know, that I have been watching, just nothing that I want to weekly talk about for coverage. And then Kuma Bear is my weekly anime uh, recommendation series, it is a YouTube short, so it's under a minute, and in under a minute, I tell you why you should check out My Next Life as a Villainous, All Roots Lead to Doom. A phenomenal series, uh, uh, anime series, two seasons, and an OVA uh, about uh, uh, a lovely young lady who has been isekai'd. She is the villainous in a dating game, uh, video game, and she is, she's got a plan. She's going to use her wits and uh, her knowledge of the game world to survive in a game that where all, all her roots lead to doom. Uh, and uh, her biggest advantage is that she is a lovable ditz. And she naturally uh, draws people to her by being fucking awesome. Uh, but she's constantly worried about everything going wrong. She's great. It's very fun. Uh, take a look at my next life as a villainous. All roots lead to doom. Uh, watch my one minute thing. All right. So I am going to talk about a manga that I am reading. And then I will talk about an anime that I watched two episodes of to see if I wanted to go and watch the rest of it. Uh, before I do that, I am going to uh, drink some water and we will dramatically transition back to the overhead, excuse me, overhead camera. And we will continue to work on the Lego Technic Excavator. And we'll do that right now. All right. Let me talk about a manga that has this title is so long uh, that I'm gonna I'm gonna take a breath before I say the title of it. But here we go. Let's talk about I, a level nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine blacksmith who was told that blacksmithing is suitable for a small fry. L O L O L L was expelled from the guild, so I changed my name. Uh, sorry, change my job to adventurer. This is a manga that is, uh, as you may understand from the title, uh, not an isekai, but is part of the banished subgenre. The subgenre that I said is going to be the next big thing in anime, and I stand by that belief. Uh, if you're unaware of what that uh, subgenre is, uh, the concept of that is that, hey, uh, it's very popular to have a series where the main character uh, did a thing well, but people did not appreciate them or they didn't understand. And so they get kicked out of their house or they kicked out of their job or their guild or the party that is going to save uh, the the hero's party or whatever. Um, so we, we got our dude, uh, Machina. Machina is a blacksmith. He's working for the, the guild that is well-regarded called the Silver Wings, and he is a, a blacksmith there. Uh, he's doing his blacksmith thang. Uh, he's making all their weapons, and they got to pay him room and board, and they got to, like, look after him, uh, and he can't go on, and they he can't go on missions because he's the blacksmith, so he can't, like, go and do stuff, and it's not, what? It would be so much cheaper to just buy weapons and those weapons would have to be better than whatever weapon Machina makes. Fuck this dude. So they kick him out. And also 
They're like, and take all your bullshit weapons with you, which seems very dumb. It's one thing to be like, oh, we are misunderstanding a key important thing here. That's one thing. But to be like, and take all these weapons because they're they're for jerks and we don't need them seems very short-sighted on their part. But that's what happens. So he said, he's like kind of at a loss. He's like, I guess I'm gonna have to find another guild, be a blacksmith in. Ah, uh, this sucks. Anyway, luckily, he happens to run into his childhood friend, uh, um, Arya, who is an adventurer, and she's in an up and coming guild. They're nowhere as cool or uh, big as uh, Silverwing, but they're called Rainbow Butterflies, and uh, they're like, and she's like, well, even if you don't want to be a blacksmith in our guild. Why not be an adventurer? And he's like, oh yeah, I guess I could do that. Because, and we find this out later. He had in his head that to be a good blacksmith, you had to be able to use all of the weapons that you make. So he trained his body to be strong enough to hold like a giant mace because there was a giant in the guild and he was like, well, yeah, I, I wouldn't be able to make her a good mace unless I knew how to use it. So he can use weapons that he can use any weapon. He's very strong. He also apparently used to hunt for materials because they got tired of helping him. So he's a skilled adventurer. Uh, and it's one of those. That's what this is. He has fun adventures. He, uh, some people have, there's some misunderstandings in the guild. Uh, he makes friends. Of course, all of his friends are ladies in the guild because, of course, they are. So he just makes a bunch of lady friends. Uh, and he's got a cool crew of awesome people. Uh, the There's one thing that seems like, oh, this might have turned out different or this might end up being something. Uh, we don't know who the guild master is because they're away. Uh, so that could turn out to be something where, like, the guild master shows up and, like, get out of here. That could be something. Um the second arc has begun where they are uh they're doing some they they got invited to this island uh that seems like there's probably more going on than than they're uh mentioning so it could be something interesting um but that is uh oh this is mm, okay it's like then it goes like that all right um oh and if you're like pat what about one of the most important parts of one of these uh, stories? Uh, if you have not read these... Uh, oh, wait. Sorry, I might have missed a step here. I got to scroll back here. Yes, I did miss a step somewhere. There it is. All right, I missed a step. Sorry, everybody. Hold on. Let me go back. I was like, that. that looks different than how I have built it. Only a couple steps that I missed. Luckily, it's Lego. You can fix your mistakes. Uh, I need to put this back here, which will lock this in so it doesn't slide out. Great. I have done that. Now I can go back to this step and I can apply this here. Um, and this just goes here. No, but there's no... Oh, so it must connect, it must connect to this. Yeah, 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 all right. And then we build the other side's excavator. And something happened. I Did I do this again? I did. I did it again. Um, see this one by five? This one by five lives somewhere on this kit. And there is a one by five on here that is supposed to be on the side. And it's this piece here. You can see how these colors are mixed matched. That's because I didn't look quickly enough or I looked too quick and I grabbed the wrong color. Luckily, this is a lot easier to fix than on the dump truck where I made the same exact issue. That was a little harder to fix because that one, uh, I had to remove a bunch of stuff to get that going. This one, I only have to remove a few components. Oh, well, of course there, look at that. So this isn't that bad, but it is mildly embarrassing. Uh, anyway, this anime, yeah, this this manga, I should say, is one of those. Um, 
He's very strong. Oh, uh, uh, the thing I wasn't talking about, the comeuppance. That is a big part of these, like, banished uh, stories where the main character is uh, uh, removed and they don't understand it. Occasionally it's, well, he hid his, his abilities and he, he tricked them into releasing him because he didn't want to do it. Or uh, there's one about a guy uh, who is like an alchemist and he's he's pretty good at it, but he's not great at it. And not until he is sent to the demon realm does he unlock an element that is only there and he becomes one of the best enchanter alchemists ever to ever live because and so he wouldn't have gotten he was good but he wouldn't have been great until he got released though those stories do happen or those stories do come up like that uh in this case there is a comeuppance of the people that did him wrong uh they they do uh deal with that um Turns out the weapons they bought from just a regular old blacksmith. Yeah, those weapons, weirdly enough, everybody, are not as good as the level 9,999 uh, blacksmith that they used to work, uh, they used to have in their guild. Turns out, yeah, he did a better job than they, th than these other were doing. Uh, and so they keep failing their missions and then they ran out of money to buy new stuff. And also, turns out, these people don't know how to maintain weapons because the weapons they had were so good that they didn't have to do anything with them. And so the weapons they use keep breaking. Uh, and eventually everyone, everyone quits the guild. The main character gets arrested because he keeps trying to steal shit. Uh, and he's trying to steal from the members of Rainbow Butterfly uh, that our guy is now a member of that guild. And so... Within the first 10 chapters, he has to beat the ass of his former boss, and he does very easily. Uh, with the sword, with the flaming sword that he, uh, that that guy used to use and then gave up. So he beat him with his own former sword, which is pretty fun. That's, that's a pretty good bit of business, if I do say so. Um, so yeah, uh... Do I think you need to run out and get this uh, manga? Nah, it's good. I like it. Uh, like I said, we're starting the second arc. I don't know what's going to happen in this arc. I am intrigued by it. Um, could be fun. Uh, I think this is like a totally readable series. I'm enjoying my time with it. Uh, I don't think it's like a... Uh, oops, is this wrong? Yes, this is wrong. I don't think it's a must... Uh, get. I don't think you're like, you've got to like run, don't walk to check this shit out. But I do think it's pretty fucking fun. Uh, and I do think you would like it. So yeah, that's my recommendation for I, a level 9,999 blacksmith who want, who was told that blacksmithing is suitable for a small fry. L O L O L O L was expelled from the guild. So I changed my job to an adventurer. Whew. Uh, and now I'm going to talk to you about the first two episodes of The Elusive Samurai. It's on Crunchyroll. Um, uh, in between seasons, as the season ends and the episodes I've been watching and talking about on a weekly basis kind of wrap up, I often take a look at series that people were, were recommended to me. That they were like, hey, uh, the, you missed this series. It's actually really good. Uh, so far... I have watched um, uh, Mayonoka Punch, which I really liked, and I'll be watching more of. And Aya hides her uh, hides her in Russian, hides her feelings in Russian, which I did not like because I thought the premise was really good, but the immediate immediate first um, like bit of business in it, uh, the first gag in it. I did I did not particularly enjoy and it became very rote. Uh, so I did not continue that one. Um, but here's the third one, The Elusive Samurai. Uh, my plan was to watch three episodes of this, but I stopped after two. I kind of understand why it's called The Elusive Samurai because the second episode kind of said, or the first episode even kind of said. Um, but yeah, uh, overall, action top tier they put some money into this the the few fight scenes that are in this particular anime 
uh, looked real good. I had no complaints with, with the action and how it looked. Uh, my only complaint was I didn't particularly care about the story and the pacing. I felt like nothing fucking happened in either episode and it was really slow. And maybe it gears up. And um, also, this is on me. This is not on the anime, The Elusive Samurai, which I know some people that really like the manga. Um, one of the things is I just, the time period doesn't really do much for me. Uh, and it, this is like set it's not historical fiction but it's set in uh in a particular uh was the 1500s um let me let me crack over my notes let me get my notes going here um the 1300s that's right 1333 um there is a the emperor is being disposed and uh or de deposed and there is uh, a rebellion happening led by uh, uh, the supporters of uh, uh, the emperor. Oh, we had a 30 second ad break happening. So we'll look at this for a second and then we'll get back into talking about the anime. Uh, sorry, did not know that was starting. Um, thanks to Seribot for showing up and saying that. But yeah, for folks that are uh, not subscribers, they're getting a 30 second ad break which is the most ad breaks we were at. We had two ad breaks in the stream, the most I've had because uh, generally I don't have ad breaks because I uh, do that ad break in the beginning of the stream before anyone really shows up. That is not the case right now. Ad breaks over. Great. Here we go. Thank you, everybody. Sorry about that. Thank you for watching ads. So... Uh, yeah, uh, the, the emperor, there is a rebellion happening to continue the emperor's power. Um, our main character, uh, Tokiyuki is, uh, he is the heir, uh, to the regency and he is not looking forward to that. He's just a dude. He's kind of carefree, not really doing much of anything. Um, the, uh, uh, Takayuji shows up and uh uh meets with him their allies and he's like yeah i gotta go squash this rebellion i can't believe i gotta deal with this stuff he doesn't say it like that but you get this the point i gotta go handle this this thing so we'll, we'll deal with that um uh your yorish hiji and uh Sizuka show up um and they're like hey we're here to pray uh and uh Yoroshigi is like, I saw a vision of you in the future as a hero uh, for for the nation. Because um, uh, there's a great war. And uh, Tokiyuki is just like, that's not what I want to hear from you. And he pieces out. Uh, and then word reaches him. Ah, fuck. Um, the... Uh, uh, the Shogunate has defected to the Emperor's side and has launched a coup. Uh, and that's... Um, a lot of people died and a bunch of people have committed suicide. And Toriyuki's fucking freaked about that. Um, because uh, Taka, uh, Takayuji, the guy that we met in the earlier episode, like he switched sides. This is fucking wild that this is happening. Uh, so our guy is um, real messed up about all of this. Uh, the folks that saw the vision show up and they're like, hey, uh, your father asked us on his deathbed to help you. So we are, we're going to help you escape. So they, they, they run away. They're on a cliff. Um, Toriyuki talks for a long time about the state of the world and his feelings and how he does not know if he wants to go on living. And then the wildest thing in this episode happens uh, where the guy that said, hey, I need you to lead the people is like, great, you want to die? I will help you with that. And pushes him off the cliff. End of series. No. Um, turns out, uh, Toriyuki 
is a goddamn samurai. He is a cool, uh, uh, put together dude that can make shit happen. Um, uh, he does a bunch of cool stunts and flips and he kills a bunch of, uh, uh, rebels, uh, and I, I have to imagine that your, C, uh, uh, your CG knew that, because why would he do that otherwise? Um, uh, and then he, uh, basically, he's just like, hey, your, and this is quote unquote, elusive nature for survival um, uh, should keep you uh, uh, alive because uh, Takayuji is going to be chasing after you. So let's go and let's get more allies. So after episode one, I was like, eh, this isn't quite my vibe, but it's well, uh, well done. Um, you know, the art, I think it was solid. I'm like, oh, all right, I might, I might give this a go. We'll, we'll see after the second episode, how I feel about it. The second episode is really slow and you know, uh, dramatic. I'm not going to say there, it wasn't like lighthearted or anything. Um, uh, so apparently during all of this, people who are loyal to, uh, uh our villain of the piece, um, let me, sorry, let me see here. I need this, um, are dispatched to go find, uh, Toyuki's brother, um, and uh and there's betrayal uh toriyuki's and uh uh, uh kuni toki uh their their uncle uh moon and shige uh apparently rats him out he's on the side of the rebels and he rats out the location of uh our guy uh our guy's brother uh so to uh toki yuki later learns that uh, his, his uncle turned on him and his uncle uh, identified the location of his brother, which led to his capture and his execution. So, yeah, his brother is now is now dead. Um, and his uncle is the betrayer. Uh, he finds out where his brother is or his uncle is and uh, they're going to follow him because apparently... Uh, Moon and Shigi is now on the hunt for uh, his other nephew because he knows that if he's the one that finds him, this will uh, will benefit him. It'll it'll move him up. Uh, there's a long explanation about all of that. He can get glory by capturing him, just like he captured his you know the brother. Um, and if he does it fast enough, then maybe our guy won't know that his brother's already been uh, killed. Uh, we meet two new, uh, of, uh, Yoroshigi's allies, uh, Kojiro and Ayoka, uh, and they're like, we will help you. So we're building out the party. We're building up the posse. They're going to help out. That's cool. Um, Toriyuki meets with his uncle and he springs a trap, but Moon and Shige also was aware of that trap and has a counter trap and it's a whole thing. And we got a big old fight scene uh, where they're fighting each other. And then uh, Kojiro and Ayoka show up uh, to exploit the big swings that Moon and Shige uses to give Toyuki an opening to kill his uncle. And the episode ends with, uh, sorry, let me just figure out where this goes. This goes somewhere here. Oh, it goes into this. Okay. Uh, it ends with a flashback as we flash back before the coup um, where the dead brother, uh, Kunitoki, is telling Toriyuki to become a hero someday. And this is now the second episode where a character has told our guy to be a hero, which he does not seem to want to do. And that's so. Um, that's where I was like, I don't know if I want to keep watching this. So I was like, I'm going to start episode three because even if I don't can finish this, I'll at least watch three episodes because I usually like to watch three episodes for this kind of thing. So I started the third episode, 
and um, it started with a very long speech about righteousness. Um, and I was like, I'm good. I'm done. My overall thoughts on the elusive samurai. I think it looks fucking phenomenal. I think this is a gorgeous looking series. Uh, it did nothing for me. I did not care about the main character. I did not care about the setting. I just, I, it left me feeling like I, I'm not sure why, like, Maybe it gets real good, and I didn't give it enough episodes. Maybe if I had finished episode three, I would have felt differently. But from where I left off, I was just like, yeah, okay. I think I'm good, and I don't think I need to keep watching this. Um, My Anoka Punch have already watched two more episodes. I'm, I'm really liking that show. Uh, that show really does it for me. So... Um, that was one that I should have been watching this season. And I'm like, I'm not kicking myself because I did watch a lot of anime this season, but I'm like, ah, oh, I could have watched that. I goofed. I really goofed. Anyway, I don't know what shows, uh, I am going to be talking about on a weekly basis. Uh, I thought I might do loner life in another world, but I don't even know if I'm going to keep off. I'm going to keep up with that one. So I don't know. Uh, but I'm not sure what I'm going to talk about. I know on Thursday's stream, I will be talking about uh, the final, the 13th episode of season two of Oshinoko. I'll be wrapping up that. Uh, and then maybe I'll have started something. I'm not even sure. Uh, I know what I'm watching like on my own time this season, like Demon Lord Retry R. I'm not going to talk about it on a weekly basis, but I will be watching that for myself because I have an interest in at least the first few episodes of that. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know exactly like I just, yeah, I haven't quite figured out every show that I'm going to be, uh, talking about on, uh, on here and what I'm going to cover. Um, but when I do know, you'll know, uh, now is the part of the stream where I want to hear from you. What are you watching right now? What are you playing? What are you up to? What are you into? Please let me know. I would love to, to hear from you about that. Um, now is the part of the stream there. Yeah, you can just let me know if you're watching any anime, watching any TV, playing any video games. If you are uh, checking out the new Zelda or you are waiting for something that's coming out this week, eagerly awaiting or playing some demos, uh, let me know. I always like to hear from you about that. I played a little bit of Garden of the Sea because I'm playing that tomorrow. Uh, this game seems very chill and cool, and I look forward to playing uh, more of it on stream because uh, I had a goddamn ball with what I played of it. Uh, I've had a real bad run of the last two days of Hearthstone, both Sunday and Monday. I just could not connect with wins. I do not want to jump to decks that I don't think are good. Uh, that I don't think are fun, but are good. But I might do that just to get some fucking wins in. I might end up just playing some ugh, meta decks. I don't want to. I want to just play silly decks. I don't know. But I'm, uh, yeah, I'm not thrilled with the current state of the meta. Um, I don't want to play aggro decks. I want to play mid-range weird things. I want to cheat out mana and play weird stuff. Um, I played against somebody today that their entire deck was just disruption. It was all disruption. It was all like, well, now I play this. And so your next turn, you can't play a minion. And your next turn, you can't play a spell. And your next turn, you can't do this. And I'll destroy that. And I'll silence this. And I'll get rid of that. And I was like, okay, on turn 10, are you going to play the thing that wipes my board? Are you going to play this? Are you going to fucking play Reno on turn 10? You played Reno on turn 10, you bastard. Uh, it was very frustrating. And I did not enjoy it. Um, I generally like Hearthstone, but right now I'm not loving my time in Hearthstone. Uh, so I think I'm just going to, I'm going to look for some weirdo decks and play some new weird decks and try my best to continue to eke out some wins. Um, yeah, Lord Crash did. It really sucked. It was like, Disruption for disruption's sake just fucking pisses me off. It's like, what what are we doing here? Fucking play to win. Um, just 
decks that exist only to make you have a bad time. Like uh, if you want to play a deck that crushes me, that like is ag aggressive zoo deck that just builds a, a wild big board and just wrecks all my shit, fine, do that. But if your deck only exists to be an asshole, like get the fuck out of here. Your deck, your deck exists so I don't get to play my deck. Fuck off with that. I hate it. Anyway, I otherwise had a pretty okay time with with gaming. Uh, next D and D session is on Wednesday. Uh, last night I watched some uh, wrestling with some friends in a Discord call, which was very fun. Um, watching some Tokyo Joshi Pro Wrestling was real good. Uh, uh, some good vibes. All my, almost all of my faves won. Um, almost all of my faves won and it was really fun. Uh, there were like, it's very rare to have, cause like uh, some of my favorites in that company don't win a lot. Uh, but a couple of them did. And that was really neat. Uh, and I really liked that. I thought that was swell that some, some of my faves won, uh, Won some games. Ooh, this pivots and turns and it moves up like this and then it excavates. It does the thing. And then you can pull it up there and you can turn it around. This is pretty fucking neat. This turned out pretty cool, everybody. Um, yes, Reno is a bad card. Yes, I don't enjoy Reno. Uh, it should... It shouldn't... It shouldn't do both. Like I know that if you don't use it, if you if you use it in a duplicate deck, then you can only do one of two effects. But the fact that it has two effects that are both brutal, clear your board, completely delete your opponent's board, and also if it's a Reno deck or there's no duplicates in there, then they can only play one minion on their next turn. That just sucks. It, Ten mana is too light, a little mana for that. I think that card should just go and ban. That should be banned. Um, uh, but yeah, so it looks like Wednesday I'll get some D&D &D together and I watched some uh, wrestling on Wednesday or Sunday and that was really fun. Uh, Aristofan says, I went to the Portland Retro Gaming Expo this weekend, which was fun. Game-wise, I started the new Zelda game, which feels like a Zelda game. So success, hell yeah. Uh, I'm also continuing Metal Gear Solid Five, where I'm playing the final countdown as a helicopter in. And I think I just Fulton Kojima. Yes, I, I believe that is accurate. I believe that is the thing that you did. All right, I'm going to turn my iPad mini off. Now the battery can slowly drain on this because I don't use it that often. Uh, Lord crashing the beat Astrobot and rescued all of the bots and such. Now I just have to uh, have some random trophies to get for the platinum. Hell yeah, get those trophies. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, I hope you had a good time at um, uh, a wrist fan at Portland Retro Gaming Expo. I, I had a few friends there doing some things and things. So I hope I hope you had a good time uh, at the expo. All right, this doesn't really. Oh, the, it, it will like this. Okay, so you can do it like that. I want it to be like this, but it won't do that. So we'll we'll just put it down instead. Uh, Lord Crash says I started the third season of Lost as the others become a bigger part of the show, which is some good stuff. I've said this before, Lord Crash, and I will say it again: marathoning is the way to watch Lost. Uh, I don't hate Lost nearly as much as many people do who watched it weekly where there would be like a three month gap and you would have time to like think about like, okay, well, this means that and this means that and clearly this means that and I'm on a message board talking about this with my friends and we think this is the thing and then you do it and it's completely something completely different or they never talk about it again because sometimes loss is just vibes. A bad episode of Lost for me is just when I watched it was just like, okay, next episode. I didn't have to wait like two weeks or have wait three months and then watch a bad episode or a meh episode. So yeah, I think that's the way to go. Uh, if I was watching Lost when it first aired, I would not have been able to continue past the first season. Yeah. Um, John says, coming in at the end of Like a Dragon, hell yeah, and almost done with season eight of Supernatural. Uh, Godspeed, um, John on Supernatural. I never got into it. I watched some of the first season and it didn't click with me. Um, and then I just lived through vicariously through people who by the end of that show, a couple of my friends were hate watching it. So I live vicariously through them and their like and or dislike. I'll show you here a couple angles here of this before we, we 
wrap the stream up. We will wrap the stream up in a couple minutes. Uh, this is the end. We have finished this. We have uh, completed our uh, excavator. I don't think I ever started watching Lost until a few seasons in and got enough uh, binging until I caught up. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we have completed the excavator. We did the... Um, so thank you to Aristofan for picking this up off my wish list because I've enjoyed building it. Um, we'll, uh, we'll just take a shot there. Oh, well, let's see. Can I get a... Yeah. And then... Get a secondary shot of the excavator like that. Great. Uh, so I will... Uh, I'll break this thing up. Uh, what's Thursday's stream going to be? Well, Thursday's stream uh is going to be a one one stream uh project saturday we will begin a new model kit i will ask my uh ten dollar patrons uh probably on wednesday or thursday to vote on what i should do for saturday but thursday a one-off stream we're doing kit bashing it is only the second time i have ever streamed a kit bash project the first time we invented one of the mystery uh because there are only so many shown of the uh gundam from uh the lost gundam from the previous war in iron blood and orphans and we like combined a bunch of uh kits together to form like a new gundam uh the shanks we we picked we picked a, a name for, i picked the name from the book of the dead uh to do that this project uh we're gonna make um a thing that i have called super and I will tell you no more about it. Uh, there is a kit that I have in my collection. And we are going to make the super version of it. The ultimate version, perhaps. Uh, we are going to kit bash a kit. And throw on a bunch of bullshit in two hours. And make it look awesome. Uh, and that is going to be Thursday stream. So make sure you come back for that. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, uh, 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 Shayton says... Um, Supernatural is a good trash show to put on. Totally. Uh, yeah, that, 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 that's, a, that's a fair assessment. Uh, Last Brick says, I'm a little over halfway through Delicious in Dungeon, I think, and the plot is picking up. Hell yeah. Kind of weirded out by the dragon. Doesn't have wings. Yes. The dungeon dragon. Uh, Dirty says, just hit the point of no return in God of War tonight, and I'm cleaning up the map while getting into season four of TNG. Hell yeah. Uh, no, it is. I can tell you this, Lord Crashing In. It is a Gundam. We are doing a super version of a Gundam. Uh, but you'll find more about that. Oh, actually, I can show you this. Uh, did I? Oh, did I include that? I did not. Never mind. You can't see that. I. I thought I had my question mark. I have a question mark image that I'm gonna put there. But I. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Question mark, because it's a mystery what i'm doing um but you'll see on thursday street um whoops i went to the wrong screen here's this screen sorry about that <laughs> oops uh i'm out of sorts anyway we're gonna wrap things up tonight um we are gonna go on a raid that is how we end every stream around here we're gonna go hang out with some folks uh that are cool as hell uh and we're gonna go uh see what what they're up to so i encourage you to come along on this uh raid here uh a reminder or oh, we're gonna raid mary kish by the way because i got a uh, I got a gift sub to to mary so and we always raid mary because she streams on mondays um so we're gonna raid mary kish i hope you come along on this raid uh i'll usually click right as i sign off oh i'm glad you were able to hang out that's awesome um uh as we are setting up this raid for mary kish a reminder that my stream tomorrow, Garden of the Sea, is the game that I'll be playing. Uh, Garden of the Sea uh, was previously just a VR game. It is going to have a Steam and Switch release coming out this Thursday. I am playing the Steam release tomorrow before that version comes out. Uh, it is not a sponsored stream. I was uh, uh, given an opportunity to stream the game. Uh, so we were going to raid Mary Kish. She's playing a game. We're going to go hang out with her. Come back tomorrow, please. Thank you all so much for being here. Hey. Special thank you. If you came in on the first raid or the second raid tonight, if you are a raider that stuck around, that's fucking awesome. That's so nice of you. Uh, thank you all so much. I'll see you in the future. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, 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 goodbye.